Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm taking a look at film photography projects, black and white 35 millimeter film, Sonic 25. A few months ago, I received a special gift from Michael over at the Film Photography Project, and it was a roll of black and white 35 millimeter film that they recently put out called Sonic 25. Sonic 25, you can find information over on their website about it, and I'll throw a link in the description if you want to pick some up. It is a very high contrast, very low ISO black and white negative film, and it is orthochromatic. Orthochromatic means that it's not sensitive to all colors of light. It is sensitive to blue light, which means that it alters the kind of look and overall contrast of the image to depending on the colors that you're shooting it. Even though it's just black and white, it's still affected by the colors in the scene. Now they don't detail exactly where this film came from, but it does say in the information about the film that it is cinematography film, which means that it's maybe like a print stock for motion picture processes. There's also like specialty printing stocks out there for motion picture purposes where you will be printing optical soundtracks onto film. And that stuff is very low ISO and very high contrast, but you can still shoot on it even though it's meant for printing purposes. 25 ISO is a very low ISO which means that you need a lot of light to shoot it because it has a very low light sensitivity. 25 is also the lowest that I can set my light meter for on my Canon AT1 here and 25 is also usually like the lowest that a lot of SLRs will go so it's still possible to just use a built-in light meter of an SLR to shoot this stuff but it does not have DX coding which means that you cannot put it in like a point-and-shoot camera that is all automatic. The ISO is too low and it's like too extreme contrasty for like an automatic exposure to know what it's doing really. This stuff you're gonna wanna use your best judgment when you're shooting your scenes. So let's take a look at it. And of course, thank you, Michael, for sending this along. And there is information in the description down below if you wanna buy this stuff. And of course, if you wanna see all the shots on this roll, including the ones that aren't in the video and you can see them in like better detail, you can take a look at them over on the Patreon. You can head over there and support that. That stuff is exclusively available for all the roll reviews that I put out. There's information in the uh, description down below for that as well. This stuff has really really high contrast and there are a lot of shots on the roll that I was really pleased with when I got it back. Orthochromatic again is different from panchromatic film. So there is orthochromatic black and white which is this stuff and it's sensitive to blue light so things like the sky will show up as white in your shots but other colors in the scene here such as like red on this sign here will be completely black sometimes. So you can see how it kind of reacts to some different colors in the scene. So the red part of the sign here is black and the pepperonis on the pizza on the sign here are also really dark. In this shot, Renee is wearing a yellow jacket and that shows up as really bright. And this is different from panchromatic film, which is like more sensitive to a wider variety of different light. So I recently looked at Ferrania's P30 film, which is a high contrast black and white film, but it's panchromatic. So it will give you like a wider range of tones based on like the colors that are in the scene that you're shooting, even though it's black and white. Now, a main characteristic of this stuff, at least in my shots, is the grain and the highlights. The, it's so it's so chunky. If you like zoom in on this stuff, they have a really kind of unique texture to them. And I would be interested in experimenting with this stuff again to see if maybe that can kind of be reduced. But it also might be kind of a product of the workflow that this role went through. The lab might have maybe blown out the bright areas even further when they were scanning. The high contrast stuff like this can be hard to get good scans of. This was also developed in a dip and dunk film processor using Tmax Developer, but the Film Photography Project's website recommends something like D96, which is a cinema film black and white developer, or HC110. Using different developers can reduce grain and contrast, so, so if I were to shoot another role of this, I would want to develop it in one of the more recommended solutions and kind of compare that to the results I got initially here. 25 ISO, really contrasty, really low ISO. You're gonna need a lot of light in order to get shots without a tripod or putting your camera on like a stand or a surface of some sort. Also with high contrast stuff like this, you wanna make sure that you're exposing for the part of the scene you want. It's not really gonna be good for mixed lighting, so 
kind of be aware of, of what you're looking at when you go to take your picture. This one shot is a, is a picture of my friend Alex from back when we were shooting the Polaroid instant roll film, which unfortunately shooting more of the instant roll stuff has been delayed. If you do want to watch that video, there's like a link that shows up here. But I, I like this shot because he's holding up a instant shot that came out of that camera that actually showed up pretty well, but in the image, it's just like white chunky grain from the, from the actual shot on this roll. Now film photography project is like man Manually taking like large rolls of film that they find, different obscure, some weird stuff, expired stuff sometimes, and then they're like rolling those down into smaller rolls so that we can shoot them, at least from what I see and understand from a lot of their stuff. And you can kind of see that based on like the edge of the film frame here because it's like completely exposed and that can be a result of just like bulk loading stuff. And this stuff is only available in uh, 35 millimeter for 24 exposure rolls, but they also sell it in 16 millimeter, 100 foot spools for motion picture cameras like shooting in a Bolex. And I think if I were to revisit this specific film, then I would probably want to try it out in 16 millimeter. I've shot a few rolls before of like a Kodak optical sound print stock that has like a really low ISO and really high contrast. And it's some of like my favorite cheap stuff to shoot. So if the Sonic 25 stuff is either the same stuff or a very similar kind of stock, then I'd be interested in trying it out. It's also like relatively cheap in terms of like 16 millimeter film costs. So yeah, I would recommend trying it out in 16 millimeter and maybe telling me how that goes. But I would also recommend picking up a roll of it in 35 and experimenting with it if you like really, really high contrast and like kind of a unique like chunky grain to it, I think. It's definitely not for everybody though, and there are uh, for sure people out there who like a much more subdued, like black and white film. Hey, so uh, when I recorded the roll review for Sonic 25 from the Film Photography Project, I actually didn't have the physical negatives back from the lab at that point yet, but now that I got to take a look at them, I was right. It is uh, Kodak Eastman uh, optical print soundtrack film, which means that it's used in printing processes in order to print uh, optical soundtracks for movie prints onto it. So you can get it in like really, really big rolls and they're actually cutting it down to streetcar, which means that not only was I right, but also I've shot this stuff in 16 millimeter before because a local place by me in Toronto offers 16 millimeter, 100 foot rolls of 3378, which is the same film stock as this in in 16 millimeter. This is 2378 from Kodak in 35 millimeter, but it's 3378 in 16 millimeter, but you can get that stuff from the Film Photography Project. It's cheap, it's really fun to shoot, and it can give you really beautiful results uh, in 16 millimeter. So uh, yeah, uh, interesting stuff. And of course, big shout out to Michael and the Film Photography Project for sending this along. They also sent me along some eight millimeter, like regular eight millimeter motion picture stuff that I'm gonna load up into a camera now that I'm talking about eight millimeter more and I'm gonna start shooting that. So I will be looking at that once that has been finished and sent off for processing and scanning and I have the footage back. Thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out. Head over to the link in the description down below to check out Sonic 25 and the Film Photography Project's website if you're interested in shooting this stuff. There's also links in the description for, again, the Patreon where you can see more samples of all the roles. It's just kind of like building up a little bit of like a reference library. There's also address for the PO Box if you've got weird, crazy film that you want to send me for this stuff or like other different stuff that you want to see me feature on the channel and look at, like crazy analog stuff in general. And a link to a Pro 8mm out in California. They're primarily a motion picture film lab that does Super 8 and 16mm. They also refurbish and sell some cameras. They've helped me out with some stuff before and they're helping me out with some stuff coming up soon as well. So keep an eye out for that and you can check out their website through the link down below. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys soon.